welcome everybody to uh, the Christmas edition uh, with all tinsel around it of uh, the Bangers and Classics podcast. That's with me, uh, James Ruppert, and uh, him, David Malloy. And so, uh, are you feeling festive, David? Bah humbug. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm uh, feeling quite festive. Yeah, <clears throat> still a bit early because we've got, what, 20 days to go to Christmas? <laughs> really something like that, I don't know. It doesn't really kick in until the other time with me. Uh, though I enjoy seeing all the lights, etc. Uh, yeah. I must admit, yeah. But uh, I'm not quite in the full festive spirit yet. I forgot to order my favourite Christmas beer, so I better get that sorted out. Right. Otherwise, otherwise, it'll be a very poor Christmas. Yeah. In case you're wondering, it's San Fouillon Cuvée de Noël. Oh, is uh, it? It's a nice Belgian beer, mm. a nice dark Belgian beer. <clears throat> yeah. And very good indeed. You can't drink lots of it, otherwise you, uh, you, you know, basically you'll, you'll fall on the floor and you'll stay down there for quite some time. Yeah. And I don't think that she who must be a babe to be too happy about that. Right. Um, yeah. So, well, what can we say? It's Christmas time. It's the Bangers and Classics mm. Christmas Crackers podcast. Yeah. And I suppose to start us off, James, we should talk about perhaps some Christmas films. Oh, okay. Go on then. Yeah, I think we should. That's a small selection. Um, over the years, one, one or two I've mentioned before, certainly my list, is one called The Sure Thing. It's from 1985, and it stars John Cusack. Now, it was made for younger people, you might say, uh, back at the time. But it's, I think it's lasted the test of time. It's funny, and it remains funny after multiple viewings. And if you like cars, there's a 1967 Volvo 122S uh, station wagon, or as we would call it, an Amazon in it. Um, yeah. It's got a pivotal role to play in the plot, because this the protagonist in the film ends up going across country uh, in America to head for a Christmas party, a Christmas liaison uh, in the company of a girl who doesn't like him and two people who are obsessed with show tunes. And of course, it all ends predictably. But it's a good fun ride along the way. Uh, so I'd definitely watch that. I think I will watch it again, James. I've got it on DVD. Oh, good. Yeah, Comfort and Joy, Bill Forsyth film. Right. Um, the one he made after Local Hero that's not so well known about. Saw it when I was 19 or so, didn't really get it, didn't really like it. Saw it again ah, a few years ago and absolutely love it. The protagonist <laughs> is a guy called Dickie Bird. He's, who, yeah. he's a local radio disc jockey played by Bill Patterson, whom I have never seen and I've never seen have a bad role. He's excellent in everything he does. And he drives a BMW, you're going to love this, BMW oh. 323i by a cabriolet in. I presume Guard Red, or Goodness the, BM, the BMW equivalent of Guard Red. It would be Zinnabar Red, I would have thought. Probably, yeah, something like that, yeah. Cinnamon Red, that's it, yeah. <laughs> and, of course, he's very, very proud of this. Uh, well, let's just say that the poor car has a bit of a rough time of it in the film. Um, it's a very funny film. It's bittersweet in places. Uh, it's based around a misunderstanding of the Glasgow ice cream wars of the 1980s. Mm. However, it's a very good film. If it's on the TV... Uh, of Amazon Prime or whatever, watch it. You will enjoy it, I am sure. Also seeing some other old cars, obviously, they were filmed in 84, 83, and one of them, uh, worthy of note, is a 131 Super Mira Fiori. Don't see any of those nowadays. I mean, I can't remember the last time I saw a 131 on the road. Yeah. You might see them at a classic rally stage, but that's about yeah, it. Sure. Yeah. Um, Escape to Victory, James. Oh, right, yeah. Bobby, Bobby Moore, God bless him. Yeah, uh, yeah. Pelly, who's not in the best of health at the moment, and obviously we, no, he's not. No. We hope we hope that uh, things work out well for him. Uh, one of the, possibly the greatest ever footballer, certainly. He set the bar very high, did Pelly? Mm. Um, just a thoroughly good, entertaining film. Yeah, uh, Michael Caine, Sylvester Stallone, and even manages to get John Wark in it, uh, <laughs> who played yeah. with the time, played with Liverpool, Scotland international. Um, they couldn't understand what he was saying. So I think the only line he's got and it's dubbed. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, you got someone else to yeah, there's talk quite, about. Yeah, Trevor Beatty's in it, isn't it? There's quite a few few other Ipswich players. Mm. Yeah, well that's right. Um, I think they were uh, playing in the area. There was a, was a tournament or a training camp on, mm. and they get recruited uh, for it or something like that. Anyway, but however, there were a great number of Ipswich players, also some great players of the past from various nations. If you want something a bit darker, then. There's a film called Black Christmas, uh, which is a strange Canadian film. I don't know if you've ever seen that, James? No, I don't think I have. They remade it a few years ago. It's a 1974, I think, original. It's well worth watching. Um, can't say it's a feel-good movie, 
But if you like sort of thrillers with a sort of horrific edge to it, yeah, definitely I would recommend that one. Mm. I'm, I'm not really a huge fan of horror movies because they usually yeah. scare the bejesus out of me, but I, I do like it. Uh, another film I'm going to recommend, uh, in fact, two films, I'll leave it at that. Uh, one is Slapshot, a ice hockey movie with Paul Newman as a sort yep. of full mouthed Sergeant Bilko type character you might imagine. Uh, he's a hockey coach of a minor league hockey team, or a coach of a minor league hockey team, are not doing well. And he comes up with uh, some ideas to try to make them play well and win games. It's very, very funny. Not fully easily offended. If you're easily offended, please don't bother. Stay away. Other film is Fort Apache the Bronx. Again, Paul Newman playing a cop. Uh, bittersweet film. Uh, I absolutely love it. And Paul Newman is since he's just brilliant in it. Uh, again, how many bad films did he make, James? Um, I don't think he made, it made any, actually. No, I can't remember seeing no, him. No, no, no bad film. Yeah, a bit of a class act as a person as well, mm. old Paul, uh, with yeah. his company giving away what, hundreds of millions of dollars to charity over the years. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I like Paul Newman. I like his films. And that's it. So that's a nicely upbeat note to finish my selection. What about you? Yeah. Oh, I haven't got very many, uh, really, David. Gremlins is a, a very good. I do remember seeing that oh, at yeah, Christmas yeah, yeah. in 1984, which is quite good. It's yeah. lots of presents around. Mm. Um, uh, Die Hard 1 and Die Hard 2 are, are, are of course, um, uh, Christmas films uh, in their own sweet way. Well, two, two, two is, yeah. Two well, is, two is, yeah, two is uh, two has got snow in it. So uh, mm, I think it's a better film than one, though. Well, you say that. I, I, I do. Know, I don't know whether that's the case. Um, hasn't got Alan Rickman in it because he fell out of a building. But there you go. Um, that was off. I don't know. Trading Places actually is a very good uh, Christmas ah. film. I would say. Um, with uh, lots of Christmas cheer in it. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Is uh, of course uh, mm. very very good indeed. Oh yeah. Um, Really, yeah. There's lots of uh, there's quite a few films that sort of you know someone dressed as Santa in it, but they're not necessarily about Christmas. But uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, I think there's a tiny bit in actually the original Lethal Weapon. I think there's a, uh, some references to Christmas, and obviously uh, we're in California, so again there's no snow. But uh, uh, I think you can stretch it. Um, but uh, no, apart from that, I'm quite uh, yeah um, happy with uh, just watching those. Mm. I used to know a girl who was a spit image of the girl in Gremlins. Goodness me. Yeah. I thought she was actually pretty, Lana. Oh, right. um, Yeah, yeah. A uh, bit of a heartbreaker, but there you go. Yeah. But yes, it was. Uh, it is a very good film, Gremlins. Very enjoyable. But there is snow in it, so where is that film supposed to, it's supposed to be, I wonder? I have no idea. Where yeah, me either. No. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely Gremlins is a great film to watch. Obviously, all the Indiana Jones films as well. Yeah. Except probably the last one and the second one. And, First, and probably the one there, there's, it's going to come out soon as well. Yeah, next year there's a new one. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be any good. No, it's going to be terrible, apparently, yeah. if you yeah. uh, watch The Critical Drinker. Oh, I haven't watched that one. Oh, no, um, he's, done a, he's done a sort of a, a review of what's coming. The first mm. and the third Indiana Jones films. Um, so odd numbers for me. The trouble mm. is, next one's five, and I've got a bad feeling it's not going to be great. Mm. Um, the third one's probably the best one with Sean Connery in it. I think it's just it's very well shot, uh, full of one-liners, mm. and, uh, some great interplay between um, Harrison Ford and Connery, particularly. Yeah. yeah, so you've got all of that. So that, that's all. That's all good. Some, there are some great films here. Yeah, so we'll be watching all all of those on uh, Christmas Day. So um, having done films, James. Yeah. I suppose we could talk about some film music. Can do. We, we never talked about that before. No. And. You know, we might never get the chance again. We might never think of it again. No. No. So I thought, well, what film themes, film music do you like? I've got a few favourites, and most of them are pretty old. In fact, all of them are pretty old. Yeah. I think they're all from the 60s. Goodness no. me. Yeah. Um, there's a chap called Ron Goodwin. Yeah. Uh, sadly, no longer with us, was a composer. And he composed uh, a number of film scores, including memorably the score for the Battle of Britain movie. Uh, he was given, I believe, a month to do the complete score. Originally, Sir William Walton was to do the score, but his music was deemed to be um, unsuited to the, the film. They right. kept one bit in, but one good one to do, to do the rest. And, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great score, but particularly what's now called ACSI, but I always remember, is the Luftwaffe March. Yeah. A piece of Germanic-sounding music. It's just excellent. Um, it's the kind of thing that should play at Munich Beer Festival. 
He also had 633 Squadron. And yep. Corker, I have a theme for, for Eagles Dare, which is another great Christmas film with the wonderful Richard Burton and Clint Eastwood in it. Mm. Supported by your friend, Ingrid Pitt, and oh, really? uh, maybe your mm. you know, females that were quite easy in the eye, it has to be said. Yeah, exactly. But I'm quite sure a lot of women would say Clint Eastwood was easy in the eye, so mm. it goes both ways. Um, but yeah, the music in the, that was great. And there's uh, Molly Shah, who is the uh, father, or was the father, mm. of Jean Michel Shah. Yeah. Uh, did some great themes over the years, but I've picked out two of them. Um, it's the, I think it's the Overture from Is Paris Burning? which is just a marvellously tuneful piece of music, a marvellously melodic piece of music that sounds very French. Back into the car theme, he did the uh, music for Grand Prix, which is also excellent. And another film I think you'll probably like, James, was Kelly yeah. Heroes. Oh, yeah, that's a good film. Well, the end theme for it is mm. it's a vocal piece. It's by the Mike Curb Congregation. It's called Burning Bridges. Right. I think it's just a great piece. Of, it's just a great song. Yeah. Uh, I really like it. It's... Um, I know it's Christmas time. It always reminds me of summer. It's summer, right. the evening, that song. There's something mm. about it is just great. And I'll give you one more. Well, what I think might be the best Bond film of all mm. uh, is On Her Majesty's Secret Service. We have Louis Armstrong, yeah, uh, the late and very much great Louis Armstrong, with We Have All the Time in the World, which is a marvellous uh, uh, track. So that, those are my selections, James. I believe you've got a couple. Oh, but, well, yeah, I've only really got a couple. Uh, anything by John Carpenter, I would have thought you'd go along oh, with. Oh, I think so, yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah, John Carpenter. John yeah, is a man, isn't he? Mm, yeah, all his stuff is great. He does everything. Yeah, he does. And uh, did you not have another one for us? Um, yeah, I've got um, uh, Van Gillis, um, uh, quite a good uh, uh, film music uh, provider of tinklings. I, I think he mm. passed away this year. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, particularly Blade Runner, very good soundtrack indeed. That is, um, which the is end theme. The end theme is wonderful. I yeah, really like the end theme. Um, um, I'd also, I've got a really obscure film uh, for people, um, which is uh, Francis Paul Coppola, one of your favourites, David. Um, oh, geek, no. Uh, and uh, I think this was the film that bankrupted him, I believe. I believe it, it cost an awful lot of money, but it's called One from the Heart. Mm. And it, it features Tom Waits' uh, tunes, and that is extremely good. You, it's never, ever shown anywhere, so you have to secure your own private copy. But it is worth it. It's, it's just a sort of a love story with good tunes in it. And yeah. uh, Nastasia Kinski, which is always mm. uh, very good. Yeah, I've not seen it. I know. The, no. I, know the, I mean, I know of the film. Mm. I've known her over for a very long time, but yeah. not being a fan of uh, Mr. Coppola, wouldn't do if we all liked the same stuff. No, uh, you know, being about being you know even-handed about it for once. Yeah, um, a lot of people get pleasure out of his films, which is great. You know, yeah. that's what they're for. <clears throat> no, that's right. Films' primary duty is to entertain. It should also educate and inform, if yeah. it can. Too, that's also great. But to, uh, yeah, if you if you derive something good from any of his films, then great. That's what they're there for. Enjoy them. And, yeah, as you say, James, uh, <clears throat> Tom Waits, I've not heard the soundtrack, but that would be interesting to hear. Yeah. I mean, you could also see the 1981 film Sun and Comfort by Walter Hill. It's mm. got a Vicuda soundtrack, lots and lots of slide guitar in it. Well, yeah, Paris, Texas as well is, is a very good uh, soundtrack. Is that, Vic, is that a Vicuda? That's Vicuda as well, yeah. Yeah. For, for younger people who don't know who Vicuda, is he still, I don't know if he's still with us, James, right? Oh, I think he still is, yeah. I think he still is, yeah. Very, very great guitarist. Particularly great uh, atmospheric slide guitar and the yeah. soundtracks. Uh, a lot of time for that kind of music. It really works well uh, on the silver screen. Anyway, moving back from films to the internet, I think it's time for us to take a quick break. This is the Bangers and Classics Christmas podcast. We've decked the halls, and later on, we'll thump the Smiths as well. And welcome back to part two of a very seasonal Bangers and Classics episode. And we're going to talk now about the quiz. You'll remember mm. that, folks. We did a quiz the last podcast. And, James, how many entries did we receive? We had a record entry, uh, actually, David. Mm. Um, it went into four figures. So that's quite incredible. So thank you, everybody, for uh, showing up and taking part. Four figures for the old oh, zeros? Yeah. <laughs> I suspect as much. Right. Not, no one entered it. Not one blooming person. We're going to run through the answers to the questions now. 
So the answer to question number one is three stones of monkey nuts. Okay, and moving on, question number two, the answer to that is 30 cases of a wicked strength lager. And number three, the answer is a five gallon drum of stain remover. Oh, wait a minute, hang on, James, this is all wrong. What? Yeah, I've got the wrong list here. Oh, really? Yeah, this is a list of stuff for the Bangers and Classics Christmas party. Oh, goodness me. I don't want them with a list of answers. Yeah, well, I won't worry about it. So it's, it's not it's not important, is it? I suppose not, no. No. Uh, I, I am sorry for you, James, because really? you, were, you were counting on the answers to some of those questions to help you with your book. Yeah, I was actually. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, I was. But there you go. It'll just have to be postponed for another year. That's it. And that's it. I mean, you're, you're doing James out of income, people. That's a damn shame. Especially this time of year. Yeah, this time of year, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he he could have been rolling in it. He, could, uh, I mean, I'm more I'm concerned here because of self interest. Because mm. who's going to pay for the bangers and classics party now? Yeah, well, I thought you were, David. So. Looks like it now, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Oh well, I do have a car spot to report of that in a brighter note. Oh, okay. If you want one to I, do that, one I saw today. Well, the roads have been gritted up here. And there has mm. been some frost. And I saw a gold-coloured TVR wedge drop, a drop head. When I suspect, looking at it, it might have been a 390 being, driven, me. Uh, being driven along a dual carriageway, and it had mm. been gritted. Mm. So someone out on a very cold winter's day, uh, a dry and sunny winter's day, but it was nonetheless it was blooming cold, uh, driving the TVR. That's, those wedges did a very clever roof arrangement, James, mm. if you remember. Yes, they did, mm. didn't they? Yeah, something that other manufacturers could have copied, but they didn't. I mm. uh, don't quite understand why. No. But uh, yeah, that was one of the things they did well. Of course, I made a I made a glorious noise too. Yeah, uh, yeah, the the V eight versions, the the rumbling wedges. Well, anyway, one of them was out today. It was heading opposite direction across a dual carriageway, so I couldn't see exactly which model it was. I couldn't even no. get a good look at the number plate to to try and find out. But I, my suspicion is it was a three ninety, and it certainly looked in really good condition uh, from the brief glimpse I got of it. So. That was that. That was a car spot. Um, I was out at the fast food place where I sometimes see the uh, VW Beetles, but they mm. weren't there. Oh, no, Beetle, no Beetles there today. Mm. Maybe they're in hibernation for the winter. Again, I can understand that, especially if you're trying to restore them, etc. If there's uh, yeah. a lot of grit on the roads, a lot of salt on the roads, then you're going to basically, well, you're going to want to keep them uh, as far away from it as you possibly can. Yeah. You know, they, they, they prefer the. They're asphalt unsalted, I believe, James. Oh, really? That's what I'm told, yeah. All right. Mm. Anyway, without further ado, mm. shall we dive into the challenge? Oh, there's a challenge. Isn't there? Yes, there's a challenge. All oh, right. Yeah, but it's to find some Christmas crackers for underneath the Christmas tree. Yeah. And we start off with trying to find an interesting car, a good buy, mm. uh, for a thousand pounds. Or less. And I had a classic lined up for this. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it's sold. I just checked before we came on, and it's gone. So I had to do a very quick look, and I found something else. This is an Auto Trader. It is a BMW uh, 320 ISE. Obviously, it's a four door. It's mm. 55 plate, which is a little bit later than we normally go, but had to be done in a hurry. Um, it's silver in color. 93,000 miles. It's had, I believe, six owners. The previous owner has apparently misplaced a service book, a little supply and aftermarket book. And then it says it's a one-month warranty. So it starts off by saying, sold a scene, part exchange to go, no warranty, and no MOT. And then it says, one-month warranty, next MOT, due 15th December. So it's it's a bit strange. Yeah, It contradicts itself, mm. uh, the ad. Be that as it may, a £1,000, having a chance to look at the, the history of it, um, if it's in decent nick and goes okay, then yeah, it's not such a bad buy, is it? No, not at all. I would have thought not. So it's on Auto Trader. Um, you may want to check that one out. Mm. Um, it's not a car I had in mind, James. It was a Volvo right. 370, but uh, sadly, it it needed a water cracker because somebody's bought it. Goodness so my, me. so it was a, that was an excellent choice by me. Mm. Maybe this one will go to too before the podcast reaches the air. But anyway, never mind that. What have you got for us? 
Well, I've no idea if they've all sold because I looked them up on Saturday night and uh, that's my list. So I've, I'm done. If they've gone, they've gone. I, I don't really care. <laughs> um, so uh, at the thousand pound uh, end of things, um, and also all my cars are red, David, and I believe there were bonus points for red. So um, there, you there were, go. yeah. My, my Volvo was red too, yeah. No, yeah, well, good. Um, so yeah, for a thousand, well, for less than a thousand, actually five hundred and fifty um, pounds, uh, a nineteen ninety eight Polo uh, with forty three thousand miles on the clock, uh, one owner. I would have to go to Belfast to collect it, which is no hardship. And uh, there you go. I just think uh, that's a pretty good going, really. A one owner, uh, sort of family owned polo forever with 43,000 miles. It seemed uh, very, very good indeed. No no paint fade or anything. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm off to after we do this podcast, David. All right. Well, yeah. I'm going to say beat this. Mm. Absolutely beat this. This is coming from sunny South Africa, mm. but it's five thousand pounds. It's a mileage of seventy-two thousand kilometers, which is an equivalent of about forty-five thousand miles. Mm. I think it's forty-five thousand exactly. It's a nineteen eighty-three Alfa Romeo Alpha mm. Six um, <coughs> automatic right. with the glorious two-point-five liter longitudinal mounted mm. uh, Busso engine, the very yeah. first incarnation of the Busso. Yeah. And it's glory. It's absolutely a wonderful thing. It's a uh, burgundy in color, so mm. that counts as red. Yeah. It's uh, a cloth. It looks like a cloth interior, possibly Al- Alcantara. I'll just tell you what it says about it. It's a genuine one owner from your car. Oh, for goodness sake, David, you really you sell yourself here. It's a one owner car. Totally original. The ad, the ad says it's got mm. tan cloth interior, fine wood interior trim, 72,000 kilometers. It's got a period Westland. Never heard of them. Yeah. Radio and tape player, electric windows, and original Campagnolo 14-inch alloys. All paperwork is available, and as a vehicle is licensed up to date. Right. And that's in South Africa. You'll see it in car and classic. It seems to be in Johannesburg. Now, if you want an excuse to go to South Africa, mm. you know, if you need one, there yeah. it is. Okay. Buy it, bring it here, mm. get it properly rust-proofed, and enjoy the heck out of it, because mm. that is something a bit special. Also, I'm just looking at it, James. It's this it's aerial. The radio aerial seems to be mounted in the bumper. Oh right. Yeah. Hmm. It's weird. There's an aerial in the bumper hmm. that sits effectively in a line just between where the uh, outer left hand headlight ends and the indicator begins. Hmm. Yeah. I don't think they did. I don't think British or UK market versions had that. Well, you probably had a, a sort of a better earth, I should think, if you did that. Yeah, possibly, possibly. But there you go. Mm. Uh, what a lovely car. And yeah. it does look in very, very good, Nick, indeed. I'll just flick through the picture, see if it's anything jumps out at me. Oh, the interior looks good, James, as well. Yeah, yeah it looks right. really spiffing, Nick. Mm. Yep, yeah, um, it's going to be hard to fault that one. Hard to beat, so I don't know. Do your best. Um, yeah, for £5,000, um, I went mad. And uh, I, when? I, Wait, sorry, I sorry, sorry, went went mad, went mad. I did, oh, right, I, did okay. I did, David's, and uh, uh, I looked at a uh, Land Rover Discovery uh, from 1996, uh, but it is a V8. I've been quite intrigued by a V8, um, although actually the V8 should be the least of your problems. I think everything else, uh, certainly on the one that we had, the engine, which was a diesel, was the least of our problems, everything else was terrible. Um, but it, it's uh, one of those vehicles being sold because it won't um, be very good in the ultra low emission zone in London. So it's a, it's it's beginning the exodus of interesting cars from uh, that particular region that we should all concentrate on. So that was the reason why it was uh, being sold. Ah. Also it had the worst, um, well, some of the worst pictures I've ever seen. Um, it's a bit like they... Uh, couldn't be bothered to feature the whole car in a single picture. It was all half pictures. It was dreadful. Uh, and that's 4250. Um, so uh, there you go. £5,000 worth of uh, ancient disco. Um, mm. Obviously, it's in a sort of a metallic red colour, not a bright red, just a sort of a metallic red. And there you go. Yeah, well, that's, that's, a, that's a good choice, James. And the idea is oh. there'll be some more interesting mm. cars coming from that area. Yeah, or probably from some other areas as well. Yeah, uh, which we'll not go into uh, in a Christmas podcast. But um, 
Well, I've got one that, um, uh, judging by the size of its engine, that my next choice yeah. uh, isn't going to output much of anything. Right. Uh, it's probably not emissions either. And it's also £5,000, but this one isn't in Johannesburg or even South Africa. This one's in Reading. Oh, right. So you don't have much of an excuse not to buy it. Mm. Um, I'm telling you the distance. It's a 1991 Honda Beat. It's a right. key car, James. Mm. It's on Car and Classic. The blurb says, chap you're selling, it bought it last year in Japan, shipped it to the UK, MOT'd and serviced in February. Um, he's driven it once. That's my status storage unit. He says, it's really nice condition, he says. Had a new ECU fitted because of a lumpy idle. Uh, nothing's been done apart from the service. It's not rusty. Um, obviously, Japan, they don't put salt on the roads in many parts of Japan. So if you get, if you get a car from the right part, you can often get one um, with a, an underside that's in excellent condition. A mate of mine bought a Mazda MX-5, was it's known there, the Unos, mm. some years ago. And uh, unlike many others, it's really, the bodily really, really in very good condition indeed. doesn't stop me slagging him about it, of course. But hey, that's part of the course. Mm. Um, just some minor way to drive a seat. Paint marks fine with some light scratches. Hood's a bit ragged, but totally watertight. Uh, he's also got another one in Japan. Hmm. Huh. There you go. So he's got two of these. <laughs> it's silver in colour, 115,000 miles. Um, easy to park. Not not much. Doesn't take up much space. Good, funky little thing. You won't see another one in the roads. There are very few in the UK. There are a few, mm. but you know, they're, they're very rare. And, yeah, why not? I mean, yeah, I dare say you could, if you wanted a new if you could source one or someone here will make one for you. Yeah. But uh, I think that's a nice, interesting little car, and it won't take up too much space under the Christmas tree either, James. Yeah, no, absolutely. So that's my third and final selection. So what have you got? Well, strangely enough, I mean, people would think that we actually planned this, you know, sort of uh, <laughs> days in advance. They're fools. Um, well, I, but I've got a Suzuki Cappuccino, uh, which is ah. in Cordoba Red, apparently. Oh. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's 8990, and it seems to be in very good condition. Um, and it's just a nice little car. I just thought that was, that was a nice little one to park under the tree. So there you go. So we've got two tiny little K cars for fun. Yeah. Cappuccino was actually sold here, though. Mm, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the roof is very interesting, didn't the mm. Cappuccino? But the rear window, I believe, retracts into the body shell. Mm, it does. Yeah. I have written about the cappuccino. I can't remember a thing about it, mind you. I'm well, sure I, yeah, I did do a, um, a test, a three-car test, which involved um, a cappuccino, a beat, um, and a, uh, uh, an AZ, AZ uh, oh. thing with the gold wings. So there you go. That was a day out. That was a day out, actually. At uh, uh, We were very near to um, uh, Docklands, and it was all clear roads, and you could do anything. There was nobody on these brand new roads at all so it was great fun yeah i mean it's the, it's the as i'm az1 mm. basically basically a master isn't it really yeah uh they are fantastic look well, mm. fantastic looking little cars yeah i don't really like to drive I, I wouldn't fit in one i'm absolutely positive so what was it like to drive james well no they were just uh fun it was it they were just really really you know focused little cars they were just um point and squirt um in all and uh it was just uh and they were noisy, obviously, because they're tiny little three-cylinder engines screaming at you. But um, they're Japanese built. They're not going to fall apart. And uh, it was just great. And they didn't weigh very much either. So that's that's the whole point of, um, I suppose, they were like three little lotuses in a way. Well, I mean, the, the engines themselves were pretty sophisticated for the time. Mm. Um, was it not uh, four valve per cylinder engines? Yeah. Double overhead camshaft. Uh, yeah. It's probably a sequential multi-point fuel injection. Of course, they were turbocharged. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I, they were, were there not even some four-wheel drive K cars back in yeah. back when, but then, I mean, the K car phenomenon was very mm. interesting. It's less significant now yeah. because the tax breaks you got in Japan for buying one um, have been dissipated or certainly been eroded over the years. Yeah. But at one time, you know, these were hugely popular in Japan. Mm. And they made all sorts of things that never came here. Yeah. And many, many of them, you, th you think, I wish they had sold that here. I mm. couldn't fit in it. But they're just such fun, funky little things. Yeah, uh, It would have been good to have seen them. You know? yeah. um, and certainly, it, obviously, the Honda Beats one, the Cappuccino's another, and the AZ one with its gull wing doors is uh, it's a bit special looking, yeah. I have to say. Um, what was your favourite? 
Well, I did get to take the cappuccino home. So just from the fact I drove that more than the others, so that was quite nice. But yeah, I mean, the AZ one, because it's got pop-up uh, doors, was just a laugh, really. Right, you got a cappuccino to go then? Oh, certainly. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to be working on some new stuff next year. No more quizzes, I think. <laughs> I mean, we didn't even get any bribes. Maybe that was what put people off, James. Well, m- most likely it was, absolutely. Anyway, all it remains to do is to wish you a happy Christmas, or a Merry Christmas even, and yeah. a Happy New Year. Be excellent to each other, as Bill and Ted would say. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, may your God go with you, I always uh, say. So, uh, yeah, whatever, please. It, whatever it is, yeah. It's just that Dave you Allen know, lives. You, you, that is very much so, very much so. Yes, oh, and, no, and why not, Dave? He was a very funny man. He was very funny indeed. Mm. But, uh, yeah, so we'll see you all next year in some way, shape or form. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Absolutely. Take care, one and all. Yeah, bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>